we're here in the Time Attack WRX. Our last, coming back from our last session uh, of the season for Time Attack, and I'm not sure you can hear that noise, but I heard a bang and then the front diff is gone. So uh, I guess it's uh, time, uh, time to swap in that STI transmission and uh, we found out the limit of the WRX one. Welcome to day one of our disassembly project for the WRX. So, uh, we're underneath the car. We've got a couple of things on the floor here. You can see this beautiful titanium exhaust from Calm uh, that uh, just momentarily is going to come out of the car. And uh, this is all in preparation for dropping in the new uh, STI transmission. So, the WRX, um, the R160 diff is going to come right out. Uh, we're going to keep this brace in there because it bolts on to the, to the STI diff. So this is going to come out, the drive shaft is going to come out, and uh, even before we get that out, we need to drop our downpipe, which uh, if it's been in there for a little while, it could be a little bit challenging. Uh, rusted bolts and rusted nuts are a Subaru specialty. So anyways, we're going to drop this bad boy out, uh, and then we're going to get finally to the transmission. So this is where the real fun begins. Uh, we're just going to unbolt it from the engine and the reason why it's fun is that I can't wait to see what the insides look. So this is where the front differential is, right in this little area that's bulging out where the axles come out and I imagine there's a whole lot of metal soup in there and we're going we're gonna to have a close look at that. So that's the beginning of the job and uh, we're going to continue on. So we've got the... Uh... Got a ring apart here, the exhaust is off of the car, and we've got the drain pan right there, or we'll drain the fluid. But the real cool part to see here is the drain plug. That is a lot of chunks. Ooh, chunky. So the transmission has finally come out. These dowel pins up in here just proved to be a little bit of a challenge. So you need to, to really uh, you need to really wiggle this uh, this thing out. Uh, it really helps to have a lift. or fortunate to have a lift here. But if you're doing this on the back in your driveway, yeah, you might need a lot of wiggling. Make sure you got a few buddies. So this is still the the OEM WRX clutch. We're about to pull this off, and we're about to uh, to pull the flywheel off. And now here are the two transmissions side by side. So you can clearly see, even from here, the massive size difference. So this is the WRX transmission and then this is the STI transmission. Obviously the, the shifter is still attached to the STI transmission because this, one's, uh, this one has the cables for shifting. But wow, what a difference in terms of size and what a difference in terms of strength. So now we're about to pull the clutch off, replace it with a new STI clutch and uh, just prep this tranny and drop it in. So we've got the axles out of the uh, WRX now and uh, here's a little comparison between the two. So you can see right here is our uh, WRX front axle and then just behind it is the STI one and you can see that the, the STI one is shinier but larger as well and the difference is even more dramatic when you look at the rear axle, this one being the STI and this one being WRX. So clearly, the STI is a much beefier shaft. And here are the two differentials. So you got your STI R180 and your WRX R160. So you can see and appreciate the size difference between the two differentials. So there's our WRX diff, it's sitting at 52.4 pounds. So our STI diff is sitting at 57.4 pounds gaining five pounds just in the diff alone. Here it's kind of neat to see the differences between the uh, STI and the WRX flywheels and uh, clutches. So on this side we have the STI, the new stuff going in, and on this side we have the, uh, the WRX. So just hovering over them, uh, obviously one's more worn out than the other, but the flywheel surface area where the clutch disc, um, well the clutch disc makes contact is actually the same 
between the two. And then, of course, the friction surface area on the clutch discs, again, this is the, the new STI, and that there is the WRX, they are pretty much the same. So, and our, uh, in spite of our time attack, uh, with this WRX clutch, it's quite a stout unit because there's there's really hardly any wear on it. It looks pretty good, and uh, obviously we have to go for the new STI one, the Exedi unit over there. But otherwise, it looks like this had a lot of life in it, and even the flywheel surface looked quite good. Final stages of prep for the uh, STI transmission here. So we've got the new throttle bearing that came with the Exedi clutch. Uh, everything is lubricated here with the fork. And uh, we are, so we're going to run a DCCD controller. Uh, we actually ordered the wrong uh, harness for it uh, initially. So we're going to have to, uh, we're either going to have to cut and splice the wires. So this is not for the 2015 plus chassis. The 2015 plus chassis has, has two plugs uh, that, that come out that need to be uh, attached to the motor. So we're either gonna have to easily uh, just splice, cut and splice, uh, or just get a new harness. Otherwise, we're swapping in the, uh, the cross member here for the transmission because we already have a parent mount and this came right off of the WRX, so that's a nice swap. It's nice to play Lego parts. A couple of small details here that we're finishing up before we drop this in. So one interesting thing to see side by side is the shifter assembly from the WRX right here and versus the shifter assembly from the STI right here. So what you'll see is that the STI's shifter assembly is obviously attached to the transmission directly, and that gives it that that uh, that nice positive feeling that that a lot of people like about the STI. Whereas WRX, well, the shifter assembly because it's cable, it actually comes out um, from from the chassis of the car, and although it, it looks the same, um, they are uh, they are functionally very very different, and that's one of the things that yeah a lot of people really enjoy about the STI. And here is our STI shifter in action. Oof, such such a nice uh, can't wait to drive this thing. It's very nice and tight. Very nice and tight. This car should have come with this transmission as an option, I think. So many things are now coming together underneath the uh, Fasti. So the drivetrain is fully in. We used the, um, the STI axles in here, both front and back. This is, this is pretty easy to all drop in. It's all nuts and bolts at this point. Uh, the rear differential is inside the car. So this is the STI differential here. And uh, it all bolts in with absolutely no issues. We reused our, our brace that we had on the WRX, the STI axles in there. We're not gonna have the temperature sensor hooked up on the WRX, but that's not a big deal. And now we started buttoning up everything else. So the exhaust, a nice titanium exhaust and our J pipe uh, is coming back in. And uh, one thing that you're going to have to do a little bit of fab work is, is just on this hanger to, to uh, brace the, the J-pipe so that's not gonna be too bad and we're just gonna jump right on that and uh, getting the fluids um, the clutch bled and uh, and the fluids in the transmission One thing that the WRX is missing is DCCD control. So the DCCD is basically a center diff lockup that's variable and it's controlled by the STI uh, control system. Now, because WRX doesn't have that, we have to put something in there that controls that center diff such that we can optimize the performance. So the guys at iWire make this Spider uh, DCCD Pro controller and uh, they make it a plug and play kit. It has an accelerometer, uh, it, it attaches to your uh, e-brake, your Excel pedal, and also two switches. So 
the automatic switch that turns it from auto to manual lockup and then a rotary knob in this case that allows me to adjust the manual lockup when it's inside. So this directly controls the solenoid in your transmission and it allows, like I said, the variability of the center diff lockup. So let's drop this in, see how it behaves and fine tune our STI transmission a little bit further. So we've got, we've got the controller here. It's, it's a pretty plain, plain box with the accelerometer attached to it and a couple, of, uh, a couple of connectors here that we're going to be plugging into the harness. So from the transmission side, We've got this, uh, this three-wire connector. This is what drives the DCD solenoid. And then we have this harness that's supplied. And this harness basically connects a ground. It connects your uh, e-brake your e right here, this brown wire. And then uh, you've got your, um, your accelerator, accelerator pedal position. So we're going to grab that right from the pedal in the 2018 AARX. So other than that, you're just going to be mounting it inside your center console. We found a really good spot here, right right uh, behind the, the rear cubby in the WRX, and we're gonna be putting the accelerometer right in the center because uh, that's, uh, that's what it, where it needs to be to make sure that, uh, that it, it picks up yaw of the car accurately. So this is supposed to be a really easy install, right? That's, that's the famous last words. So we are uh, mostly disassembling stuff. We have the wiring harness um, in here for the DCCD. We've got the knobs and the push button nicely installed in here. So this is the, the manual control uh, nicely done there. And this is the auto on off. Everything wiring wise is done except for the, um, the accelerator pedal. It's not actually accelerator pedal. You need to get it from your electronic throttle body and uh, that signal that blue wire signal and so it's actually right right in there you can see it but we have to run it into and underneath here there's a there's a grommet we have to run it through there through the firewall and back into this is the ECU connector that you want to do it to you have to remove the ECU there's two bolts that hold it together this is the ECU connector. There's the blue wire. It's position 17. So we just need to run that that wire now through the grommet into the engine bay and attach it for our signal from the electronic throttle body. The Subaru is all buttoned up. Finally, did it this evening. You can see that you got the center console. It rings together. We've got our uh, our DCCD in there and. Um, it's, it's about 10 p.m. right now and I'm on my way to ice racing. So it's a time trials on the lake on ice. Uh, I can't wait to try this STI drivetrain and, uh, and the new DC controller on ice. So uh, yeah, let's see how we do tomorrow. Now I just got to get to destination. I've got another about 60 miles here. Uh, we're, we're at a stop where we're waiting for a pilot car there to uh to proceed in the canyon so it's a, it's a beautiful drive it's just dark right now and uh, once i get there get some rest and tomorrow morning we'll be fresh to see how we do on the frozen lake so this is what ice racing is all about a whole bunch of cars on a frozen lake that are about to go and do some lapping. This is not a uh, an autocross style event. This is a lapping style event. So we're gonna get multiple laps. You see out there is a CRX that's uh, just having a ton of fun. He is on race studs. We are not on race studs on our uh, on our. SDI drivetrain swap WRX. We are on some uh, Hakapolitas that are about well, about too old. They're they're about eight years old. So we'll see how how they do, and we'll see how the drivetrain does. So I'm very very curious. It's a great opportunity on ice to really determine uh, how the the car behaves at the limit, uh, and uh, and how it behaves under highly slippery conditions because. Uh, this is what we're going to be using for time attack on uh, on asphalt this uh, this summer. So it's time to dial in the drivetrain and this DCZ controller.
first day of ice racing is in the in the books. Uh, had a lot of fun with the new uh, transmission in the WRX. So it does offer um, a lot of grip and a lot of potential. Uh, we have rubber tires on ice, so uh, the, the key was how to set this up so that it could the car could move around and at the same time have have traction. And this was a trial and error, and it depends on the grip level, it depends on the power you're making, it depends on the tires you're using, and all that. So if you're scouring the forums looking for the best setup for your car, uh, this is something that's not going to be a one-size-fits-all. And I always stress that, and I always stress that with the tuning that we do, uh, is that we try to cater uh, our tuning and our products and our advice uh, to, to what the customer needs. And that's why we go out here and, and we, we test all these things uh, out, out in the open, because we need to understand how, to, how they work uh, firsthand uh, and, and how to best help you guys set those up. So you're wondering why I'm not around a car. Well, because our ice racing lake is, is somewhere down there. And uh, just took a little hike up here. So look, look at this beauty, natural beauty. We're so fortunate be surrounded by this uh, this natural beauty be able to race here be able to enjoy it so tail end of winter and there's still snow on these uh, on these hills and on these mountains uh, here in, uh, in BC